The Monoprice Cadet, a beginner's perspective. Hello YouTube. Thought I'd make a quick video to show you this new 3D printer I just bought. Uh, full disclosure, I am brand new into 3D printing. I know nothing about it. I've never owned one before. However, whenever I buy some new product or decide to participate in some new activity, I research it to death, uh, which I did here. And I watched a lot of videos, read a bunch of websites on recommendations of what to get. I had a couple of limitations which led me to this, the biggest of which was space. I live in a very small place. I have nowhere to put anything. I cannot just leave some mechanical looking device sitting out in, in full view. Uh, and this really fit the bill for what I was looking for. Very small, very compact, and it looks good. And it really does look good. It's got a solid build quality. Uh, first of all, uh, from what I can tell, this is a rebranded We Do Tina 2. And it comes in the box, ready to go, very little setup. And once you set it up and start printing, it's ready to go. It, it is very simple, uh, very good beginner machine. And yet, the print quality on it turned out to be surprising. Um, it prints very well. Uh, a couple of things. So I got some information from YouTube. I watched a video, a YouTube channel uh, by Dr. Vox. And Dr. Vax, excuse me. And that uh, actually is what led me to research this machine. And a couple of the things that I really, really like about it. The build quality is fantastic, at least in my opinion. The machine has auto bed leveling, which works really well. Uh, comes ready to go right out of the box. Uh, looks good, small space. Now, talking of space, it, it really is small. The build plate is four by four, barely. Um, although I will say, the documentation and paperwork and everything says it's 100 by 105 by 100 but when you go into the slicer software that's set up for this machine it shows 100 by 120 which is kind of odd but i've had no problems with anything i've printed so far um everything came out really really well you know for example this this is the test print sorry for the blur this is the test print the very there's first thing I printed on the machine and it came out great. I mean, really, really nice. Very surprised by that. And you can see all the other things I made and I apologize. I wish I had the, the names or the, the screen names of the people who uploaded these other projects that I snagged off the internet and printed, but I don't have them. Uh, everything came out really well. Uh, one negative, just pretend it doesn't have a spool holder at all. The one that it has on the side does not hold a regular reel, does not hold a regular spool. So if you're going to order one of these, if you're going to buy one of these, grab an external spool holder before you do or when you do. Um, it, you, it'll prevent some frustration at the beginning of your process. Um, everything else about this I like. I'm very, very, very happy with it. The... Uh, the build size has not been an issue. Um, you can see all the little things I've made. This, these are really the sizes of the things I, I would make anyway. I'm not building large, large projects um, that would require me to have a bigger build plate. Although, I guess I could always just make things in pieces and put them together after the fact. Um, anyway, this is... Speaking of the software, it, it, you're a little limited there because unless you're going to set it up yourself, it comes with its own proprietary software for Windows and its own or, or a version of Cura. Um, just showing you this build plate. Very flexible material that goes, comes on it. They give you a couple of extras. It works very well. Nothing has had a problem sticking and coming off. Everything comes with a built with a raft, though, because it does not have a heated build plate. So let's take a look at the software though, because uh, I want to show you what Cura looks like for this particular machine. So here's what it looks like when you get into Cura. Yeah, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, it is set up for this. You, it comes with two possibilities. I have a Mac. This is your only possibility if you have a Mac. The other software is designed for Windows. But those of you familiar with Cura, which my understanding is it's very popular and widely used, you know, it's ready to go for this machine. All of the settings 
for this particular printer or built into their version. Um, I, being new, I haven't been messing around with it or poking. You can see there where the Y axis is 120, which is strange because it's supposedly 100, but it works very well. Um, but all the settings are in here. If, if you are more savvy and want to go in and snag all those settings out and put it into a different slicer, I, I'm sure that would work just fine. But this is not available as a, as a preset for other slicers that I could tell. Um, probably because it's kind of new and not very many of them are out there. Uh, but this works really well. I'm very, very happy with it. it. I haven't had any issues with it. I'm obviously not in here poking around messing with the settings because I don't know that much about it. Uh, but in time, I will probably play with it and see what I can make it do differently than it already does. So that's pretty much it. I appreciate y'all watching, and um, I hope you got something out of this video.